on the air. Hello. Hello, Art. I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I, a former employee, uh, Area 51. I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago. We were never alone. They've always been here. Waiting. The government knows about them. They, they are not what they claim to be. They have infiltrated a lot of, uh, of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. They want the major population centers wiped out so that the few that are left will be more easily controllable. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex Zarfati and today we're gonna to talk about sound design. And if you haven't been on the channel before, we talk about all things documentary filmmaking, but today specifically, we are gonna get an in-depth breakdown of how I use sound design in my projects. Now the film you just saw had zero sound in it. It was just some stock footage clips that I put together for the purpose of this video. But before we dive into the actual tutorial, I wanna break down the different categories of sound design so you have a general understanding of how all of these sounds work in tandem to create this environment for your film. And once you have a general understanding of the different categories of sound design, you'll have a much easier time locating these sounds that you're looking for in these stock sites like Artlist or Splice or whatever stock sites that you use to get your stock sounds. You'll be able to locate them a lot quicker and you'll be able to have a good understanding of the different kind of sounds that you could add into your project. Now, the first one we're gonna talk about is Foley sound design or practical sound design. And this is everything from shoes walking floor to doors slamming, car engines, anything that has to do with an object making a sound. The next category is atmospheric sound design, which is used to help give you an idea of the environment that you're in. Something like city street sounds or nature sounds, rain, waterfall. After that, now we're getting into the more creative aspects of sound design. Things like whooshes, risers, hits, and sound effects. Now music isn't considered sound design, but I absolutely take music into account before I start my sound design process because there are times when the music needs to shine and there are times when the sound design needs to shine. If they are both, they're trying to outshine each other, it's gonna sound like a jumbled up mess. All of these aspects of sound design give your film character and if done correctly, absolutely submerse your audience in the story that you're trying to tell. And if you guys wanna see specifically how I choose my music for my projects, I put a video in this link right here you guys can go check that out and it basically breaks down everything that has to do with choosing the right music for your film. Okay, so now that we covered the basics, what I wanna do is I wanna jump into the project file and show you guys how I organize all of my sounds in bins. So as you notice, I have my footage right here in this bin and then I have it broken down into categories, which is hits, foley, atmospheres, sound effects, riser, and voiceover. Now, in order to find these sounds, I use stock sites like Artlist, Epidemic Sound, and Envato Elements. And normally what I'll do is I'll just type in something like car engine and I look for a sound that is the closest to what I need so it fits the scene that I'm looking for. And I'll spend a good amount of time just putting together a bunch of sounds in my folder and organizing them before I even get started. Now, as I bring sounds into my project, I make sure that I color code them. This is the entire project here with all the different sound design. I like to color code it by categories. So like the first line of sound that I always have is either gonna be dialogue or voiceover. I'll color all of the voiceover or dialogue one color and the color that I chose for this was blue. The second line, I usually do the music and I do the music the second line right after the dialogue because once I lock the music in, it's not changing and I color coded that green. It's a really good idea to create a system when you're doing sound design because when you're looking at it as a whole, when you finish it and you want to change the sound, if everything's the same color or you have no idea what tracks have what sounds on them, then it's gonna be very hard for you to find them. You're gonna have to go through your project to solo each sound that's in there and find the sound that you want to change or you want to fix. I learned pretty quickly that like if I color code all my sounds, if I have them on designated tracks in my project file, if I want to go ahead and find something and I, I take a snapshot view of everything and I just look at everything as a whole, I can quickly like get an idea of what sound is what in any particular scene because I know what sounds are color coded what. So now that I broke down the organization of my sound design, my first step 
before I start sound designing anything is I watch the film or a section of the film from start to finish with just the music and the dialogue. And as I'm watching, I'll go ahead and make some notes. Now, basically what I'm looking for here is not necessarily atmospheric or fully sound design. What I'm looking for here to make notes on is special sound design moments that could make this edit really interesting. And that could be something like sound effects or hits or risers, even something tonal that could help the edit move along. Taking that into consideration, let's take a watch. You're on the air, hello. Hello, Art. I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I, a former employee, of Area 51. Okay, so right there, what we're gonna do is, we know that here, I'm gonna make a note, and I'm gonna say, add glitch sound. Because right here, this is just screaming for some sound design. We know that right there, we know that we're going to have some sound design in that section right there. The medical discharge about a week ago. Okay. We were never alone. So right there, right when I see this guy floating in this water, to me, I feel like this is like a change in something happening. We want to transition sound into this scene, maybe a riser. So I'm going to put a, a note here, riser there and we're going to do some sort of low sub sonic hit we also know that we want some sound design underwater sound design that i think that would be cool we were never alone they've always been here waiting the government knows about them. They, they are not what they claim. In this section right here, the music stops. Music stops. And because the music is stopping in this section right here, we need something that's going to fill it up until from here to here. Particularly the Area 51. Okay. At that point, music starts up again. In this little section, in this little pocket, we need something that's going to give a change of pace. To me, I'm looking About at this them. kid, they, they are this not kid, what they claim this creepy guy right here. To be, they have infiltrated a lot of... Uh, I want to do something that feels a little haunting in that moment. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I know that we need something that's going to be spacious. Build a momentum to this big drop that's about to happen in this section right here. Particularly the Area 51. Okay, so we know here is going to be a drop, drop. This is where the story starts picking up and you start getting a different pace. Clips start coming in faster. The story starts pushing. So let's keep watching and see if we see any other sound design kind of ideas that we have leading up to the end. They want the major population centers. This guy running through the forest. The population centers. To me, we definitely have to show him running through the forest running sounds for sure but we also need a whoosh so i'm gonna put and whoosh i feel like that's a really cool idea for sound design we'll get him running like <sighs> running through the forest and then as the camera you can kind of see the camera the starts to, to move with him and as it moves i'm hearing like a shh. so again just take it from this guy running the population <laughs> okay now so the, the, the few that are left will be so the dialogue he's talking about the major population city centers wiped out the government knows okay so in the edit it's showing like it almost looks like rioting it almost looks like people are rioting or protesting against a certain thing this could be a really cool idea to have a bunch of like crowds of people like rioting crowds of people rioting okay so we see this guy driving in this scene right here, I think it'd definitely be cool to just have some Foley sound car driving. But it looks like the car that he's driving looks like an old car. So I'm gonna put old car. It looks like an old beat up Ford truck that you would have like on a farm or something like that. I don't know why I get that vibe looking at this old guy driving this car. I, I just get that vibe. Easily controllable. Okay, so this guy is doing something here, and it looks like he's in the rain or something like that. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and add rain here too. Add rain. Moving on. Okay, like we did in the beginning, I feel like you could definitely do a glitch here, a little glitch effect. If the music permits it, you could do it, right? So like, we noticed that the music is starting to get a lot more intense and it's starting to overpower things. Like I said before in the beginning, you have to know when to let the music take over. So in this point, you have to be careful because if you do too much sound design in this section, it's gonna sound like a jumbled up mess and that's what we wanna try to avoid. But I think maybe there could be a little pocket in this clip right here. I'm gonna put glitch sound here and it might work or it might not. All right, so now let's break down piece by piece, section by section, this edit, and I'm gonna go over the different sounds that I used, why I use them, and how I use them all together to create this overall sound design environment. Let me put these headphones on and let's get started. Let's start off with the music track. We're gonna cut the dialogue track for now, and we're just gonna focus on the music track. Now that's what I started off with. And I chose that because it has this like otherworldly sound. It almost sounds like there's an, some sort of alien frequency in there. And then it also has this like low bed of sound that I really liked and I really thought fit what you're seeing in the scene. Then moving on from there, we have right here, which is all the brown color is my atmospheres. So now let's solo the music and the atmosphere. And the atmosphere that I'm, I'm choosing to use is like forest at night. So you're starting to build this foundation of dark, late at night kind of a tone. Now moving on from there, I added in some Foley sound, walking on, you know, grass or leaves, kind of crunching kind of a sound. And it sounds like this. You hear that kind of coming in and out. I wanted to make you feel like there was this this entity or this otherworldly alien-like kind of atmosphere. So what I wanted to do was use this sound right here, and I'm just gonna solo just this sound. And it's just like kind of like warping sound coming in and out as the light is coming in and out. So I thought this could be like almost like a, like a spaceship sound and like the light coming from this area is like this spaceship kind of breathing almost. Now, mixing all of it together, including the voiceover, you get this overall ambience. You're on the air, hello. Hello, Art. I don't have a whole lot of time. Okay, awesome. Now, cutting to this next section, we have this guy standing with a huge light source over him. So the first thing that I wanna break down is the ambience in which he's living in. And the ambience that I wanted was cold. I wanted it to feel cold. I wanted it to feel spacious. And I wanted it to feel kind of creepy. And this is the sound that I went with. Almost sounds like a, either like a train station or like a, like a cave when you hear it by itself. But when you actually look at the image that's playing on screen, you fooled me. I feel like you just put me in that, that place. Or right, let's hear it with the music. Uh, I, a former employee, uh, area. Okay, cool. The next big thing would be these little glitching sounds that come in and out of this guy looking around. And I wanted to make it feel like he was losing his mind. So I didn't want them to be like computer glitches. I wanted them to be like almost like alien frequency glitches, you know? So this is the sound that I came up with. Kind of cool. So now, mixing all of that into the sound design. Now, the next thing I thought was kind of cool was out of the glitch and away from this guy with this giant light source over his head into this clip of this guy sitting in, the, in a dark room by himself, I wanted you to get a little bit of a smack. So I added this little hit right here. And I thought it was spacious. I thought it was just small enough to make you kind of lean in, but not big enough to have an abrupt change. I thought that was an awesome sound. And then it was about building the ambience in that room. And what's going on in this room? Well, there's a TV going on. It looks like it could be kind of staticky. So I wanted to make sure I had two types of ambience. Number one, 
was that TV sound right there. And then I found I found this clip. I forgot what site that I was using, but I, I searched up news clip, and it said reporting sp suspicious activity, which I thought played into the whole role of everything, and I thought was perfect for what's going on in this scene. Now, the other sound that I added to this sounded like an old TV was on, which it looks like this guy has like an old, one of those old box TVs, which is kind of perfect. So just listen to those two sounds alone. Cool, to me, that's that's the tone, that's the that's the vibe. Now, mixing all of it together, including the music and the, the voiceover. I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago. In with those glitches again, showing this guy. So, same glitches that were in before. Totally adds a vibe, totally like, almost like a uh, Mr. Robot or like a... Um, Fight Club kind of vibe, which I really like. Discharge about a week ago. Okay, awesome. So now let's break down this section right here. I use a riser. Riser's right here in yellow, and it sounds like this. I didn't want something too overbearing. I wanted something nice and short, so what I did was I, I took this volume automation and I put it all the way down until I got to about here. Because I didn't want the volume to start until you see him back in the in the TV room again and then boom it shows you this guy floating in water but to to kind of really accentuate the the change in environment i wanted to give a hit and the hit that i went with sounded like this big spacious not hard like a hard hit it was more like a deep reverberated hit and what I did with this was I added a low pass filter. What the low pass filter does is that it takes the top half of the EQ and basically brings it all the way down. So you're just hearing the lower end of the EQ. Now with the, with the low pass off, it sounds like this. I thought that top end of the hit was a little bit too crispy for me. I wanted something a little bit deeper. So with the low pass on now, with the low pass off, you hear the difference? You just basically take away that top crispiness from it and you just leave the bottom half. So now hearing that whole transition into this part right here. A week ago, we were never alone. Okay, now this was a perfect moment to let the voiceover kind of shine. We have one atmospheric sound design clip right here giving that underwater sound effect. That's really the whole, that's it. That's all that's going on in here. That and the voiceover. Now, what's starting to creep in is the sound of the, this breathing sound. What I did with this breathing sound was slowly rise it up so that the volume slowly increases and it almost acts in tandem with the riser that I'm about to show you that I put in right now. We were never alone. They've always been here, waiting. I knew that I needed to get to this next part with this kid looking back into the camera, and I wanted to add another riser here. So you could see this little riser sound right here. And it was almost like a click at the end. So it clicks and it kind of, it makes you pay attention. It makes you lean in and look at this kid's face. So one more time, boom. Now. I'm going to add a little constant power at the end because if you notice, it had a little bit of a click at the end of it. And that's what happens if you don't add the constant power, the fade at the end. There's the, this little click pop at the end of something and just one track having that on there is not a big deal. But when you accumulate that over like 20 different tracks playing at the same time or even 10 different tracks playing at the same time, all of those little clicks and pops add up. You definitely want to make sure that you add a little fade in, in the beginning and at the end of each sound effect. So moving on, that's the riser sound into this hit sound. Now this hit sound becomes almost like a uh, constant rhythm 
that starts happening, it, it kind of impacts on certain clips. And I added that two more times. Another sound that I added in here, which was pretty important, was this ticking clock clicking sound that's happening here, which sounds like this. And if you notice, it wasn't quite long enough, so what I had to do was cut it up a few times, and I added a constant power again to um, have it be a smooth transition between the cuts. And I tried my absolute best to keep it on time and on rhythm throughout this little section. But what I think it does is it starts to give a little bit more pacing to the edit and it gives a little bit more anticipation and anxiety as you're feeling it. So just take a listen with everything in involved. The government knows about them. They, they are not what they claim to be. They have infiltrated a lot of, uh, of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Moving on to this sound right here, this transition sound. It was uh, like this alien transmission kind of like droning down with a high pitched feedback frequency coming up that would rise and lead us into this next part, which enters a new music cue that starts to drive the rest of the piece. The military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Now, when these alien ships hit down, I created this really cool, almost like a like some sort of alien horn sound or like some sort of like War of the Worlds type sound as these ships are coming down. And I was playing around with some sounds for a while. This is the sound that I started with. Now that's just sounded like a bunch of jumbled up mess. But when I add the, the reverb on it, now it starts to sound like this thing is like a big monstrous horn sound. And one thing that I, I have learned when you're sound designing, how important the pitch shifter is. This is the sound without the pitch shifter. Okay, now this is with the pitch shifter. It's almost an entirely different sound. And what I did was I, I took it up to 12 semitones. So it's basically going up a whole octave. The military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Oh. They want the major population centers right now. So that the now, again, there's some Foley sound design in here with this guy running. Without that, you kind of miss it. Right? So it's like... Your population centers twice. It's kind of weird without it. Now, putting it back in... They want the major population It feels like you're in... So that the, the few... Having him running past the camera and, and, and kind of like heavy breathing, it, it, it almost like pushes the pacing of the edit, which is exactly what you want the sound design to do. You want it to help the edit go where it's supposed to go. So now another important thing that you should always do in your sound design is layer as many sounds as you can that will make a wall of sound. And what I mean by this is sometimes one sound is not enough. Sometimes having a couple of sounds layering up on top of each other will complete the ambience. If you listen to these three sounds together, this is what they sound like. There's something about it that just sounds real. Now, if you just listen to them one by one, it just doesn't, it just doesn't complete it. So let's hear everything at once. Again, here, a little bit of ambient sound design with the rain. Leading into the last part of the trailer, I didn't really do a lot of sound design because I let the music kind of shine in that moment. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's important to know when the music needs to just do its thing by itself and when there's a pocket of sound design that, are, that is going to help the edit. In the end, I tried adding a bunch of sound design over a lot of these clips and it just didn't work out because it was too jumbled up. There was too much going on. 
I instead let the music do its job and it actually ended up working out perfectly. So let's just finish the rest of this. So that is it for this sound design tutorial. I hope you guys found a lot of these tips useful and use them on your next projects. Guys, if you want to learn more about documentary filmmaking, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.